Now that we have created the truss assembly out of the imported line bodies, we have to assign a cross section to these solids. There, there are two cross sections, a rectangular tube and a circular tube. So let us create the concepts from which they will be based off of. Concept, cross section, rectangular tube would be the first one we do. The rectangular tube is a square with the outside edges being 80 millimeters or 0 0.08 meters. So this distance will be eight centimeters, I suppose. And the thickness of the wall is uh, 2.5 millimeters. So, since it's a square, it doesn't matter which one, uh, one or two we assign. So, uh, eight centimeters to the width of the walls. And 2.5 millimeters, or 0 0.0025 meters, to the thicknesses. Now we move on and import the second circular tube. Its inner radius is its inner radius is larger than 0 0.02 meters. So we first have to move to the outer radius. It will ANSYS will not let us define an inner radius larger than the outer radius. The outer radius is 0 0.0381 meters. We zoom in on this. And the inner radius is 0 0.036525. A thin world circle. Now we need to apply these to the uh, line bodies that we have created. Clicking on any of the options will snap you back to normal view. Now we want to make sure that, in general, the line bodies that are going on the outside and this cross-sectional inside are all rectangular. So if we rotate this, the ones in this plane are all rectangular. The order that you input the line bodies in will determine where the rectangular uh, cross-section came from, uh, where the rectangular cross-sectional line bodies are. In my case, they are the bottom eight, since I imported them last. But it is easy to double check to see which ones are which by which yellow activates, uh, which yellow line activates when we click on them. And if it's in that particular plane, then it is the rectangular line body. So let's isolate the rectangulars and put in a cross section of a rectangular tube. And then for the remaining, shift clicking, put a cross section of the circular tube. Now, if you don't see the cross sections here, it means you forgot to turn on view cross section so solids. Now we need to offset the rectangular tubes. Here I have hidden everything but the rectangular tubes themselves, the flexure mounts, and the submount. Now each uh, the cross-sectional line bodies that are the rectangular mounts were defined at certain points that were 0.04 away from where they needed to be. 
That is because we desired this plane, th this yellow plane that is selected, to be the plane where one side of the rectangle connects with the circular tubes and the other connects with the rectangular. We need to move the, uh, all the rectangular tubes 0.04 meters up this way, or in the z direction. Now, the only way to do that is to click on a certain line body, change its offset type to user defined, and you'll be listed with an X and an Y office offset. Due to the directionality and the, our definition of the global coordinate system, X will be parallel and positive towards the Z, so uh, towards the global Z. So all we need to do is put in 0.04 towards the X on, a, on each of them. Unfortunately, we can't do this in a mass assignment. We have to do this each one by hand. Now we need to double check to make sure that the cross sections are behaving as we expected them to. So we rotate and look in that they are all flush with the flexure mounts and they are all still centered. So yes, they have done it. If not, you have to mess around with each individual either coordinate system or or do math between the X and Y to find out the correct direction that you want to get at. 